Next team Faranza, one way to try to make your fans forget that you traded away Khalil Mack is to go out and sign the best pass rusher on the market. Ezekiel Ansa is in Mack, but if the Raiders sign him and then draft an edge defender with a number 4 pick they could solve their post-Mack woes. Wiley one of the breakout players of the 2018 season, Smith finished the year with a team-high 8.5 sacks and 25 knockdowns for the Ravens. Baltimore might have to choose between Smith and CJ. Mosley, and the Colts could add a valuable piece to their pass rush rotation in the process. Gang Green has had success plucking players off the Pats roster in the past, Curtis Martin comes to mind, and adding flowers would give the Jets a valuable edge rusher across from Jordan Jenkins. At 25, Flowers' peak should be in line with Sam Darnold's development. If New England loses Flowers in free agency and Devin McCourty to retirement, it will need to add defensive pieces. Sue is the sort of Planet Theory athlete Bill Belichick would dream about adding to his roster. If the 32-year-old Sue's market doesn't develop, Belichick might have the chance. This scenario would cost New England $14 million. Los Angeles will be in the market for pass rushing help at a team-friendly cost, and while Suggs is 36, he still managed seven sacks for the Ravens last season. The Rams will sign one veteran edge defender this offseason, if not more. While Danico Autry impressed with seven sacks during the second half of the season, Indy still lacks a number one edge rusher. Enter Ezekiel Ansa, who turns 30 in May and had a 12-sack season in 2017 before missing most of 2018 with a shoulder injury. This deal guarantees Ansa $35 million through two years. Don't be surprised if the bidding gets high for Fowler, who had eight sacks in 2017 before impressing in his half-season with the Rams. The former third overall pick is still just 24, and the Jets were interested in trading for Fowler at the deadline. They sorely need help on the edge. As was the case with Danny Amendola and Neat Solder last year, anyone going after a Patriots free agent probably has to overpay to convince them to leave New England. The Lions don't have a number one edge rusher without Ansa, so expect Lions coach Matt Patricia, the former Pats defensive coordinator, to pursue Flowers hard. Let's get Miles Garrett some help. The Bruns still have reasons to think Emmanuel Ogba could round into a fine starter, but rotating Ogba and Graham might make both players more productive. Graham is an excellent two-way edge defender and a logical short-term move for a competitive Browns team. If the Eagles lose Graham, they'll probably want to add at least one defensive end to their already sturdy edge rotation. Wake showed some signs of decline in 2018, but he was still good for 6 sacks and 17 knockdowns in 13 games. This is about all the Eagles will be able to spend. Green Bay finally waded into free agency under new GM Brian Guttekens last season, although the returns, Jimmy Graham, Mohamed Wilkerson, weren't great. Kyler Fackrell, 10.5 sacks on 12 knockdowns, had an unsustainable season, and none of the other Green Bay Edge rushers top 3.5 sacks. Ezekiel Ansett could be a logical pivot. Will it be tough to convince Matthews to head back to his old college stomping grounds in the Coliseum for a year? The 32-year-old hasn't hit double-digit sacks in a season since 2014, but joining the Rams would free up Matthews to focus solely on getting after opposing quarterbacks in Wade Phillips' 3-4 defense. With Ndamukin Sue and Dante Fowler Jr. likely leaving, the Rams have their replacements. Jackson is a likely cap casualty for the Jaguars, but he could fill the Sue role after excelling under Wade Phillips in Denver. Jackson grew up in Los Angeles and spent two years at USC. Miles Garrett, Larry Ogan, Joe B and Sue? That'll play. Sue might not get the long-term deal he's hoping for because of a draft loaded with defensive linemen, but the five-time Pro Bowler would be a major upgrade on Trevon Coley. This two-year deal would come fully guaranteed. Golden is now two years removed from his 12.5 sack breakout, having missed most of 2017 with a torn ACL before struggling through a 2.5 sack campaign last season. 
a reunion with former Cardinals coaches Bruce Arians and Todd Bowles in Tampa could allow Golden to rebuild his value in advance of a bigger deal in 2020. Next team for Bell, coach Kyle Shanahan and GM John Lynch have shown a propensity for blowing away the market when they want a player. Le'Veon Bell's patience as a runner and versatility in the passing game make him a dream fit for Shanahan's scheme, and cap space isn't an issue for the rebuilding 49ers. McKinnon could collect nearly $12 million from the 49ers without ever playing a snap for the team, as the former Vikings back tore his ACL before the 2018 season and wouldn't be needed with Matt Frieda playing behind Bell. He could rebuild his value while taking over for Tevin Coleman as Atlanta's no. Two the Jets have the most cap space in the league and desperately need to add weapons for Sam Darnold. If they miss out on Bell, they could choose to spread their money across multiple players. The free agent Coleman would replace Bilal Powell, and while New York has Isaiah Crowell, GM Mike McCagnan has been comfortable paying two back starter money before. If Ingram wants a clear path to no. One work, it isn't coming in New Orleans. The only real opening in the market might be with the Buccaneers, who don't seem thrilled with the duo of Peyton Barber and 2018 second-rounder Ronald Jones. Imagine Ingram playing in the Superdome in Pewter. The Saints will still want a bigger back to split reps with Alvin Kamara, and assuming that the Rams plan on giving a healthy Todd Gurley 95-plus percent of the snaps in 2019, Anderson might prefer to slot in as Ingram's replacement in New Orleans. Two revenge games against Carolina won't hurt. While the Jets could add a receiver for Sam Darnold this offseason, the best offensive weapon available in free agency is a running back. With GM Mike McCagnan all in for his job and with more than $103 million in cap space, the Jets can and might outbid any team for Le'Veon Bell. Marshawn Lynch is a free agent, and while the Raiders got by with Doug Martin in 2018, Ingram would give them a primary back to take some of the workload off Derek Carr and the passing game. It might be the 29-year-old's last chance to cash in as a starter. The former Dolphins and Eagles standout will probably have to settle for a one-year deal after tearing his ACL, and Ajayi would be a fun replacement for Mark Ingram as a change of pace to Alvin Kamara. 25-year-old Ajayi was also a productive receiver at Boise State. While it's unclear whether the Jaguars will be able to void Leonard Fournette's future contract guarantees, they'll need a back behind Fournette with TJ. Yellen and Corey Grant both free agents. Murray, on the market after two healthy seasons in Minnesota, has just three fumbles on 637 touches over the past three years. With Kareem Hunt out of football and Spencer Ware a free agent, the Chiefs will add at least one back behind Damian Williams. Grant was buried in Jacksonville, but his ability to play on third down and special teams make him an ideal fit as a second or third back. If owner Mark Davis and coach Gian Gruden want to distract their fans from the disaster of the past 12 months, they might land on Le'Veon Bell as a viable building block for the upcoming move to Las Vegas. The Raiders would probably have to pay a premium to sign Bell. Could they guarantee $50 million? In search of a title in what might be his final season in the NFL, it's hard to blame Gore from heading to an obvious contender. Pittsburgh got good work out of James Conner and Jalen Samuels in 2018, and the 35-year-old Gore could back them up while helping to stabilize the Pittsburgh locker room. The new brain trust in Miami saw Hill wow onlookers in Patriots camp last summer before going down with a torn ACL in the season opener. With the Dolphins rebuilding, Hill would figure to be a power back option in a rotation with Kenyon Drake and Kalen Balich. It has been a rumor going back half a decade by now, but Peterson has reportedly wanted to make a stop in Dallas before ending his career. The Palestine, Texas, product impressed as Washington's starter in 2018, but with Darius Geis coming back, Peterson might want to take his chances behind Ezekiel Elliott on a one-year deal.
In this scenario, no great opportunity opens up for Ingram, who might very well rather try to win a championship with the only pro team he has ever known in lieu of going to play for a rebuilding franchise. This deal is four years and $25 million, but it would realistically be a two-year, $12 million deal with extra years for cap purposes. Next team for Bridgewater, Jacksonville wants to upgrade on Blake Bortles with a quarterback who won't turn the ball over, and Teddy Bridgewater's career interception rate 2.6% is about league average. The Jaguars are also strapped for cap space, which means Bridgewater's middling start in Week 17, his first since 2015, might have helped price him in. When New Bucks coach Bruce Arians was in Arizona, the Cards organization saw Bortles, who could get cut this offseason, as a possible franchise quarterback coming out of UCF in 2014. Tampa is rolling with Jameis Winston as its starter, but Bortles gives the Bucks an athletic backup with a big arm. Every coach loves a reclamation project. New Browns offensive coordinator Todd Munkin ran the Bucks offense early in the 2018 season, when Fitzmagic looked like an unexpected MVP candidate. The 36-year-old, who might get to play for every team in the NFL by the time he finishes his career, would be a sound backup for Baker Mayfield. Oakland, which has three first-round picks, probably has to draft help for its abysmal pass rush at no. 4. But if Murray skips past the Giants, no. 6. And Jaguars, number 7, the Raiders could move up for the Heisman Trophy winner from Oklahoma. The 24th and 35th selections are a near-perfect match on the traditional draft chart for no. 11 overall, where the Bengals pick. You know Jake Gruden will get a good scouting report on Carr from his brother, John. The Raiders are rebuilding, and with the reports that Alex Smith is unlikely to play in 2019, if ever again, Carr obviously knows the scheme, although he would likely have to take a pay cut. This scenario would cost Washington only a fourth-round pick. An injured Teddy Bridgewater threw only two regular season passes from 2016 to 2017, but he was at the facility working with then Vikings offensive coordinator Pat Shermer, who is now the Giants coach. This deal gives the Giants time to evaluate Bridgewater while retaining the flexibility to draft the passer if they fall in love. With New York moving on from Eli Manning, the off-rumored reunion between Manning and former Giants coach Tom Kaplan has consummated with a one-year, $8 million contract, while the Jaguars also add their quarterback of the future by using the no. 7 pick on the Ohio State star. After seeing Foles beat the Patriots in Super Bowl 52, new Dolphins coach Brian Flores, the former New England defensive coordinator, begins his tenure in Miami with the 30-year-old Foles as his new starter by signing him to a three-year, $54 million deal. Fay gets a 2019 second-round pick in return. Seeking an upgrade behind the oft-injured Marcus Mariota, the Titans pay a premium to bring in another passer with injury concerns. Tannehill's athleticism allows the Titans to play a roughly similar offense if Mariota goes down again in 2019. Tennessee would save $1.5 million by releasing Blaine Gabbert. Sean Payton was reportedly interested in drafting Baker Mayfield last year, so would it be shocking to see him go after Mayfield's replacement at Oklahoma. The Saints don't have a first-round pick but they send the 62nd pick and their 2020 first-rounder to the Ravens for the 22nd selection to get ahead of the Raiders at no. 24. In a scenario in which Teddy Bridgewater hits the free agent market and doesn't find a starting job, the opportunity to play behind a Hall of Famer seems more appealing. His two-year, $16 million deal gives him the inside track to start in 2020 if Drew Brees retires and hedges the Saints bets if the Brees who struggled after November returns next year. Jacksonville finds its new starter by replacing Blake Bortles with Foles, who won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia while working with new Jags offensive coordinator John DeFilippo. The Eagles end up turning this into a de facto trade by signing defensive lineman Malik Jackson to a one-year, $6 million deal after he is cut by the Jags. 
GM John Elway's latest attempt to solve his quarterback woes sees him pick up McCown, with the 39-year-old joining to serve as a short-term starter and mentor to Denver's quarterback of the future on a one-year, $6 million deal. Elway has been popularly linked to the Missouri quarterback Locke, who should still be on the board at pick no. 10. While New York GM Dave Gettleman isn't guaranteeing Eli Manning a spot on the roster for 2019, trading with the Broncos for Kinnam gives the Giants legitimate competition for their faded starter if he does stick around. It also reunites Keenum with Pat Shermer, who coaxed a career season out of the former Houston star in Minnesota in 2017. Former Virginia Tech star began his career with the Ravens before winning the starting job in Buffalo, where he excelled under current Ravens offensive coordinator Greg Roman. Taylor is the perfect backup for Lamar Jackson and allows Baltimore to stay with their specialized, run-first scheme if the second-year passer gets injured. Next team for Flacco, Denver GM John Elway has shown an affinity for tall pocket passers like Brock Osweiler and Paxton Lynch, so it makes sense that he would go after the 6'6 Joe Flacco, who could get released as Baltimore turns over the team to Lamar Jackson. New Broncos offensive coordinator Rich Scangarello is likely to bring over pieces of 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan's scheme, which Flacco knows from playing under Gary Kubiak. After franchising Foles, the Eagles don't have much leverage and can't hold out for a great pick in return. They get one of the highest fourth-rounders from the Raiders, who have plenty of cap space to absorb Foles' deal. Gruden might very well keep Foles and Derek Carr on the roster to challenge each other in 2019. The Eagles need a veteran backup to replace Foles, and they should expect him to play meaningful snaps given Carson Wentz's injury history. Keenum might be stretched as a starter for extended periods of time, but he would be one of the best backup quarterbacks in football. In need of a veteran stopgap with Alex Smith's career in jeopardy, Washington takes a two-year flyer on Tannehill, who posted a 93.2 passer rating when healthy under Adam Gase in Miami. Washington will get flexibility for 2020, as $12 million of Tannehill's deal is guaranteed. While the Panthers seem optimistic about Cam Newton after the former MVP underwent shoulder surgery, the Colts were optimistic about Andrew Luck in spring 2017, too. Taylor would give Carolina a veteran backup with a similar skill set to Newton, allowing them to stay within their scheme if Newton isn't ready. Jeff Flacco moves 37 miles down I-95 to join Washington, where Jay Gruden watched Flacco go 4-2 against his Bengals during three years as Cincy offensive coordinator. Flacco, who could get released, isn't a similar quarterback to Alex Smith, but he has spent the past few years in the West Coast defense under Mark Trestman and Marty Mornenweg. Trading Foles within the division would be a non-starter for some teams, but Philadelphia GM Howie Roseman was part of the organization when the Eagles traded Donovan McNabb to Washington in 2010. The trade reunites Foles with Pat Shermer, who was the offensive coordinator when Foles threw 27 touchdowns and only two interceptions in 2013. Broncos GM John Elway's only successful quarterback acquisition comes from the Manning family, so it shouldn't be a surprise if he goes back to the well for Peyton's younger brother. Eli might not have many suitors if he is cut, but the Broncos would likely still see him as an upgrade on incumbent Case Keenum. All reports out of Miami suggest the team is entering a rebuild, but if it cuts Ryan Tannehill, it still needs to figure out the quarterback situation. Signing Bridgewater to a one-year, $14 million deal gives the Dolphins a short-term starter, while trading up ahead of the Giants at pick no. Six should net them Ohio State signal caller Dwayne Haskins. The last quarterback domino left standing matches Ten Hill with the Jaguars, who desperately want a veteran who isn't named Blake Bortles to line up under center in Week 1. Hill doesn't have a great turnover rate, but Jacksonville Executive Vice President of Football Operations Tom Kaplan got by with Eli Manning all those years in New York. This could cost $17 million over two years.
If Oakland coach John Gruden doesn't think Derek Carr is a franchise quarterback, the time to make a move is now, since Carr still has some modest trade value. The likely release, Joe Flacco isn't going to excite fans, but he's a logical bridge quarterback in advance of a draftee in 2019 or 2020. The rebuilding Dolphins are likely to move on from Ryan Tannehill, and while they could draft a quarterback in 2019, Miami might be more interested in pursuing Justin Herbert. In the 2020 class, taking a flyer on Carr would make sense in the short term. The Raiders are bereft of receiving talent. Rumors have linked the Bengals to Tannehill, given that new Bengals coach Zach Taylor once served as Tannehill's quarterback's coach in Miami. Tannehill doesn't have much trade value, and with two years and just over $38 million left on his deal, the Bengals send a conditional seventh-round pick to Miami. Tannehill's arrival in Cincinnati would likely bring an end to Dalton's tenure in Ohio after eight seasons. There's an obvious fit for him in Washington, where former Bengals offensive coordinator Jay Gruden needs a quarterback with Alex Smith's future uncertain. Dalton has two years and $33.5 million left on his deal. The Broncos and Jaguars end up as the two teams in a relative bidding war for Foles, but with the Jaguars' cap constraints, Denver makes more sense as a likely landing spot. Foles signs a three-year, $66 million deal with the Broncos, who then cut Case Keenum. Next team for Tate, with Rob Gronkowski potentially retiring and Chris Hogan a free agent, New England probably needs to add a receiver this offseason. Coordinator Josh McDaniels might also change the offense post Grank, and adding 30-year-old Golden Tate would likely produce more spread looks with two excellent slot receivers in Tate and Julian Edelman. New England's other move to replace its start tight end is to sign a player who looked like a lost member of the Gronkowski family when healthy. Effort has missed 50 games over the past five years, of course, but he makes sense as a low-cost, $1.5 million flyer for the Pats. Hogan's tour around the AFC East continues, as the Jets pick up a veteran capable of playing multiple positions and a hedge against the availability of Robbie Anderson and Quincy Inunua. Hogan is a useful plan B if the Jets don't land on any of the bigger names at receiver. Let's only be fair and get the Bills a no. Wide out for Josh Allen, as they accelerate their rebuild by going after the 30-year-old Brown. A top-five weapon doesn't come cheap, as the Bills have to send the ninth overall pick to the Steelers for Brown and a fourth-round selection. The Broncos are perilously thin at wide out after 2018 saw them trade Demarius Thomas and lose Emmanuel Sanders to a torn Achilles. Cortland Sutton profiles as a possession receiver, but Stills gives them a weapon to hit defenses over the top. The rebuilding Dolphins get extra draft ammunition for April. I suggested that Tennessee should have made a Golden Tate trade at the deadline in October, and I'll bring the Titans back to the well here. Tate's toughness and sure hands should help Marcus Mariota on third down, where the Titans quarterback ranked 20th in QBR last season. Former coach Adam Gase's attempt to fix Miami's culture with slot receivers did not work, although Amendola managed to play 15 games. His $6 million base salary is untenable, but his depth behind Cooper Cup in Los Angeles, Amendola could make sense on a one-year, $2 million deal. The Raiders might have to pay a premium to attract free agents, but it would make sense for them to go after a younger option at wideout like the 24-year-old Funchess. John Gruden valued tall receivers like Michael Clayton and Maurice Stovall during his time in Tampa. This deal would max out at $38 million over three years. Bill Belichick needs to bring in veteran wideouts, and the 25-year-old Crowder has been productive when healthy in Washington. Contact would have to be team-friendly, but Crowder could figure as Julian Edelman's replacement in the slot after 2019 if the Pats don't want to re-sign the Super Bowl MVP. The Eagles don't have the cap space to make a real investment at wide receiver behind Alshon Jeffrey, but if Jackson wants to return to his old stomping grounds, they should be able to clear out a few million dollars. Philly still needs a downfield weapon for Carson Wentz. 
Baltimore doesn't have a ton of cap room, but Golden Tate is the exact sort of valuable possession receiver the Ravens have loved to bring in over the past decade. Signing Tate might require the Ravens to get out of the Michael Crabtree business after a year, but the former Seahawks and Lions star would represent an upgrade. Grant originally signed a multi-year deal with the Ravens last year only to mysteriously fail his physical and end up with the Colts on a one-year contract. Grant had a relatively quiet season in Indy, but the Bills badly need wide-out help and will take a flyer on someone like Grant. Moncrief didn't live up to his one-year, $9.6 million price tag in Jacksonville, but he did stay healthy for all 16 games for the first time since 2015. The Cardinals need to add size on the outside for 2019 and beyond, and Moncrief doesn't turn 26 until August. With Cole Beasley suggesting that the Cowboys' front office dictates who gets the football, it shouldn't be a surprise that Dallas will be in the market for a new slot receiver, and this deal could cost $18 million. Humphrey set career highs in receptions and receiving yards in 2018, and the 26-year-old has been healthier than most slot guys early in his career. New England needs to look at replacements for Chris Hogan, Cordero Patterson and Philip Dorsett. Garcon, who will likely be cut by the 49ers, would figure in as part of the Pats receiving core on the outside, with Julian Edelman taking the slot reps. Next team for Thomas. The Falcons badly need to invest in their defense, and while they aren't flush with cap space, a reunion with Earl Thomas would give former Seahawks defensive coordinator Don Quinn the free safety he needs to turn off the spigot of big plays in Atlanta. Keanu Neal is best as a full-time box safety. The Peters trade didn't really take in Los Angeles, where the former Chiefs star was torched off and on throughout the season. If the Rams don't want to sign Peters to an extension, a move to Tampa would get the Rams a better pick than any compensatory selection. Expected to assume a bigger role with the Broncos after Aqib Tlaib left for Los Angeles, Roby took a step backward in 2018 and had a disappointing season. It might make sense for him to take a one-year deal and rebuild his value under former coach Wade Phillips in California. With both Mike Adams and Eric Reed free agents, the Panthers need to find solutions at safety. Collins would be the luxury purchase, but players with his pedigree at 25 almost never hit the free agent market. Collins, James Bradbury and Dante Jackson could be a top 5 trio for the next 5 years. Did you see what the Patriots just did to the Rams in the Super Bowl? Beating the Pats means having an answer in the slot, and Callahan just finished an excellent season there for the Bears. Chicago probably can't afford to pay three corners, and the Jets have plenty of money to spend. Imagine telling a Seahawks fan in 2014 that the 49ers would line up Richard Sherman and Earl Thomas in the same backfield five years later. Yikes! Thomas would give defensive coordinator Robert Sala one of the best free safeties in league history and form a fearsome duo with Jagaski Tart. It wouldn't be a surprise to see plenty of Bruce Arians' old charges from Arizona follow him to Tampa, and after a resurgent season for the Texans, in 2018, Matthew is likely in line for a multi-year contract. Tampa needs all the defensive help it can get. The Colts have churned through cornerbacks during their first two seasons under GM Chris Ballard, so Wendy could look for some stability at the position this offseason. Ballard helped draft the 25-year-old Nelson during his time in Kansas City, although inconsistency is a concern. Let's get the Colts two cornerbacks. Howard is entering the final year of his rookie deal after a breakout campaign, but he admitted recently that he has been the subject of trade rumors. If the Dolphins don't want to pay the 25-year-old, a late first-round pick would be a nice return.